Greetings, you Vulpine Goliaths. I hope you're doing well. My name is Graham, and welcome to the Crack a Pack here on LRRMTG. Please subscribe and all that fun stuff. Today, we are opening a pack of Theros, original Theros, that was given to us by Tony Delight through mail time. It was sent anyway on December. On December? In December. It was. It is dated December 2022. This came with the team sealed Theros wide uh, cube se sealed thing. Ignore all of that. We did a sealed event that had uh, Theros Born of the Gods Journey into Nyx and Theros Beyond Death uh, on a Friday night paper fight. The VOD for which is available on this very channel. That was also sent in by Tony. And uh, we actually hadn't noticed until we did it that this was in there, but it was, and so we found it, and so now we're recording it. Uh, join me. First up, what are those? I'll tell you, it's the Fleet Feather Sandals. Two mana for an equipment that gives the creature flying in haste, and equips for two. Neat. I, I think this is one of the ones that sort of early in the format my it my recollection is vague to be frank but if i recall early in the format it was like oh no it's a waste of a card fleet feather sandals no 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 and then later in the format it was like well but what if we put it on like a seven power nessian asp or something and then just start smacking people kite sail has had that same arc in some draft formats where it's like no, this is not. This equipment is not worth space in your draft deck. And then by the end of the format, it's like, but I have all these big creatures, and we've come to a ground stall. What if I can hit them? So yeah, Fleet Feather Sandals were fine. Opaline Unicorn. Opaline. Opaline. Sounds like it's not a real word now. Three mana for an artifact unicorn. It's a one-two and taps to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. I. I'm a fan of Opaline Unicorn. Not in two-color decks, but I like it in general. Like, wouldn't run it just as a pure mana accelerant. But if you have to run Manalith, why not a Manalith with one power and two toughness? Ray of Dissolution. Two and a white for an instant destroy target enchantment. You gain three life. This is one of those formats where you kind of want this card. You would you would main deck this card. You wouldn't love I didn't I don't love main decking it, but there's so many enchantments. That's kind of the theme of the set. All the bestow creatures. It's frightening. Scourge mark. Speaking of enchantments and spells that target we haven't we haven't been talking about spells that target, but Heroic was another big thing in the set. The point is, Scourge Mark is one in a black for a creature enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus oh. So it's two mana and a card worth replacing itself, triggering Heroic, and giving one power? Sometimes. Sometimes it was. Oh, the bane of the Voltron strategy. Grip Tide. Three and a blue for an instant. Put target creature on top of its owner's library. And then all the auras fall off and you've seen everything. Uh, yeah, Grip Tide, good stuff. Honestly, this was, this is the, this, this is a set where you'd have people going very tall on a very small number of creatures. And if you could disrupt that plan and make all their bestow, you know, just litter the battlefield with Alsaids and Eidolons and stuff as their one heroic gladiator goes flying to the top of your library. Uh, yeah, it was... It, it, it could be good stuff. Satyr... Back-to-back -back Satyrs, actually. I'm just... I, I glanced ahead and realized we've got Satyr tribal here. Satyr Hedonist is first. It's one and a green for a 2-1 Satyr. That for one red mana and sacrifice it, you add three red mana to your mana pool. So it sort of turns himself into a little seething song there. And then the Satyr Rambler is one and a red, also for a 2-1, but this one has Trample. So... Sure. I, these were... I don't know. These were acceptable. Rambler's better because it's just a 2-1 with Trample and then you can put stuff on top of it. You can bestow things on it. Whereas the Hedonist, you I, I ostensibly want to die if you don't want it just as a 2-1 for 2. Speaking of two ones for two, I have one in a white for a two one. It's the Leonin Snarecaster, a cat soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you may tap target creature. Or you may not. It's up to you. 
In Magic the Gathering, you make the decisions. Uh, sounds like a corporate, you know. You may or may not tap these creatures. Try Magic the Gathering today. This card was fine. It was you could it could let you get an attack through. If again, if they were Voltroning up their one big creature, and you were like, all right, tap that creature. Now all my little things can attack. There were ways it could work. Feral Invocation is an aura for two and a green. It has flash, and the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. You know what's even more annoying than a combat trick? A combat trick that sticks around. <laughs> like, yeah, it's three mana for plus two, plus two, but they, it's just, it stays there. And it triggers heroic and all that good stuff. Ooh, Simic Uncommon. It's Horizon Chimera. Two green blue for a 3 2 flash flyer with trample. It's got flample, inherent flample, and whenever you draw a card, you gain a life. I really quite like Horizon Chimera. Ooh, but not as much as I like Heliod's Emissary. Elk. Big elk. Three and a white for a 3 3. Elk enchantment creature. Whenever Heliod's emissary or enchanted creature attacks, tap target creature and opponent controls. Also, you can bestow it. Remember this? This was a really cool mechanic. I've already talked about it, but here's what it actually does. You can cast a creature as an aura. So you can cast this as a 3-3 that taps a creature for 4 mana. Or for 7 mana, yes it's a lot, cast it as an aura on a different creature. Then that creature gets plus 3, plus 3, and the ability to tap something when it attacks and then they made the rules work in the way that you as the controller would want it to which is if you know i'm targeting my horizon chimera with my heliod's emissary as bestow and they kill the horizon chimera then the emissary just goes elk and falls to the battlefield and is fine and is a creature instead of being you know instead of fizzling and going to the graveyard that would be bad anyway heliod's emissary is good oh man thassa's emissary we've got We've got Elmer and Shelly in the same pack. Shout out limited resources. Three and a blue for a 3-3 crab. When it or enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card and the enchanted creature gets plus three plus three. The bestow cost here is one cheaper. It is five and a blue rather than six and a white. So I don't know if I can choose between these. So hopefully the rare slot saves me. It's, ooh, Sylvan Carry added. All right, that's pretty good. One and a green for a 0-3 plant with Defender and Hexproof. Tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. It feels like there's still several cards left in here, so let's see what we've got. We have an add card on Legendary Permanence, which is very exciting. We've got a Swamp, and we have a Foil Battlewise Valor. One in a white instant target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and you scry one, which is fine. Man, what a nice pack for draft. Value-wise, it's like 450, which is surprising for a pack of this era, but 350 of that is the Sylvan Carry added, which may also be the first pick. I think that's that's probably correct. Like, it's, you know, it's mana acceleration. It's got hexproof, so, you know, you can put stuff on it. It's got Defender, so you can't really, like, Voltron this, but it does help you power out other stuff, and it splashes really well. And then I don't have to choose between Thassa's Emissary and Heliod's Emissary, because those are both really good. But uh, yeah, Horizon Chimera, Invocation, Snarecaster, Griptide, Rave Disillusion, these are all very playable. Battlewise Valor is great in the Heroic deck, but I will happily take the carry added and leave a dollar's worth of value elsewhere in the pack. There we go. Good stuff. Thank you, Tony Delight, for sending us this pack of Theros. I enjoyed opening it. Until next time, uh, reminder that everything we do here at Loading Ready Run is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. And if you want to send us a pack, as Tony did, you can. You don't have to, but you can to the address you see on your screen. Until next time, I've been Graham, joined by James on Tech. Matt edits these. Jordan helps out. Heather gets them online. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.